This is what the DSS has done, Nigeria is doing. DSS, see what DSS is doing. Court, court, the federal court, court, the federal court, the federal court. Yes, yes. Despite order by the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos, the Department of State Services has returned the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Wefele, to custody. Justice Nicholas Owebo, who granted the bail, ordered that Emefele be remanded in prison until he fulfills his bail conditions. However, a fight ensued between the officials of the secret uh, police and their counterparts, the Nigerian Correctional Service, over who would move <laughs> from the court. Now, the last election came with a lot of speculations with the Naira redesign and the cash crunch. Um, and it is clear that there's more to the activities of today than meets the eye. So today we're asking, this Emefele saga, do you think it is a witch hunt? Abuse of power, or it is politically motivated? I leave that question for you. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 You can also tweet at us, thread us at Way Show Africa now with the hashtag Way Show. So, this conversation here, eh? live is both a. What's your color? Power is very transient. Very, very transient. Um, so, when I saw this video, I just like shook my head. Is there money attached to the moving of Emefele back to prison that will warrant the kind of fight that we saw with the DSS and the, what's it called, the correctional facility? Besides, if at all there has to be a movement back to the prison, they say they should remand him to the prison. Who is technically supposed to return him back to the prison? Is it not the prison official or the prison warden that brought him there in the first place that is supposed to return him back? Why is the DSS, you know, well, that one, I just feel like maybe there's just too much abuse of power going on there. But hey, Emifele has a lot of things around him. There were allegations that some of the things that transpired prior to the 2023 general elections, right, were politically motivated and it was almost like he was trying to stifle the, uh, what's it called, the money, money power that some of the political parties and um, political candidates had. Because again, we know that largely Nigerian political structure is controlled by, by Naira and Kabul, right? Yeah. It con it's controlled by money. So the, all that Naira redesign, going through all that drama and all of that, people are saying that it was targeted at specific candidates. So it was almost, you know, like a no-brainer when immediately when the president was, um, what's it called, sworn into power, the first thing that happened was him picking up um, Emifele. And of course, even this particular one sending him to court, it's even long overdue because he's been in the custody, I think, for over a month now, where people were attacking and saying that this is not legal. You're supposed to charge them to court immediately and not keep them for that long. But hey, this is not for me to say. Do you believe? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, <laughs> do you think it's witch hunt? Do you think it's abuse of power? Or do you think this is actually a politically motivated, uh, what's it called, event? I think it's all three, really. Really? It's, oh, okay. Yeah. It's all three. He's, he's, um, he made a mistake and um, he got politically, I mean, he got into the point. On, on the wrong side. I mean, no, maybe not wrong side, but he just got into the political space, you know. I, um, his position, by virtue of what he does, yes, you may have to do a lot of, he has to do a lot of stuff with the government and all that, but. He, one would think that someone like him should be very neutral, you know, in terms of, okay, being with this party or whatever. But, I mean, whatever all that is, in Nigeria, we know that um, there is no such thing as an ideal situation in Nigeria. Everything is up for grabs. Everything, there is an undertone to everything. So whether he's being the scapegoat for a larger play, maybe he's just the easier, easiest person Again, whether, target, uh, uh, the soft exactly, target. or whether he's like a bone thrown to the people, like, okay, you know what, di channel your anger. This is the person who made all that Naira redesign. Forgetting, again, I, I feel that I'm not sure that it's, it's, it's correct to say that 
Emefele just woke up one day and came up with that policy. Mm. I'm, I'm not very, I'm not sure that would be the correct assessment. You must of have what, certain kinds that, of there approval. Must have, I mean, there must have been okay. approvals at certain places. To put a bit of context, mm. right, what he's being charged to court, and I'll come to you, EC, is two counts. Mm. They say possession of illegal, what's it called, ammunition, and possession of uh, possession of illegal ammunition and possession of uh, uh, live eh? Shot, guns and live ammunition. Yes, live that's ammunition. the word. I'm looking for the real terminology. <laughs> but let me come to you. I'll come back to you, Uti. Isi, what are your thoughts on this? Isi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go it's, ahead. You see, the drama, dr Nigeria has a lot of drama. And when we start this Nigeria drama, well, lying gives me a headache because I don't even know where to take it from due to the fact that you don't know the whole story. That's where I'm looking at it from. So I wouldn't jump into any conclusion and say whether it's witch hunt or politically uh, motivated or um, whether it's abuse of power because I don't have the facts because when two elephants are fighting, the grass will suffer. And at this point, we are suffering while they are fighting. So again, whether um, Emetele or the erstwhile uh, pre um, governor of the CBN did something wrong, yes, he must have stepped on some toes while he was in office. Um, whether he um, is going through a lot right now, yes, I would say he's going through a lot. Again, I would also make uh, us understand that his office was what was being respected, you know. And uh, to see two, um, do you call them now? Uh, I'm looking for the right word for, to use. The DSS and the um, prison uh, facility managers fighting over who would take him also shows that there is a lot we do not understand because probably DSS is also following an order from above which we are not aware of. So it is also an eye opener that it is about the office for me. It's about the office being respected. Hmm. Whether they're respecting a method himself right now is a different ball game in town. Now going back to why, um, if it's a witch hunt, we don't know. I don't know. It's, they've not really stated a crime. It, firearms, Everybody carries firearms. So one way or you say what? I did not carry firearms. Okay, let me rephrase that. Those in higher, the echelons, they actually carry, they all have firearms. No, they, they don't them. actually. It is their oddlies, right? Is that what you said? I am, yes. Either way, either way, they carry firearms. The bottom line here is that we do not know his actual crime. This is beyond firearms. Okay. This is beyond this. We need a situation whereby they will tell us, okay, this is what he's done. Okay. Transparency. Okay, let me come, let me come back. But uh, let's quickly go on a break, right? Because I'd like to open our phone lines and I'll come to hear your thoughts, Uti. Because you see, if it is, um, if it is firearms and possession of whatever, live ammunition, live ammunition. you remember that the current... Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Wajabi Amila, had an incident where one of his oddly shot someone and killed someone, actually, you know. So, I mean, it, it, firearms, come on. Let's take a break. All right, so now if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing Emyefele Saga. We're asking, is this a witch hunt, abuse of power, or politically motivated? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 808 Tweet us, thread us at Wayshow Africa. Now, our phone line is now open. The number to call is 7749 That's the number to call. Remember, turn off whatever device it is that you're listening in from or, or you're watching us from. Now, Uti, let me come to you. You've been quiet and smiling and smiling and adjusting and adjusting. Kilo day. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, first and foremost, 
conspiracy theorists in the room will tell you that there is enough fiction, maybe with a sprinkling of facts, to support either of the three options you are positing. So I agree with you there, Tiola. Um, but for me, I don't, my, my opinions are more questions because, in fact, as everybody was talking, I was trying to remember the trajectory of events in my head mm. from the initial, so I think the suspension came first, Yes. right? Then he was arrested. Mm -hmm. Then I believe he was, um, was it put on house arrest? Yeah. Yes, first, right? yeah. Um, so I've lost track now between house arrest and, and prison and incident this, yeah. and mm -hmm. prison. So I, I, I'm not sure what the trajectory is there if he went from house arrest to then being going He was into, remanded, yes. He was remanded, yes. right? So here are my questions. If I start from the beginning, with suspension, right, I can understand given the immense... Um, issues that came about with the redesign policy. You know, if you hire a new CEO in a company and somebody has a very public recent failure, mm. you can get behind um, a suspension. Mm. That this person, there's a very public goof. So let's first of all mm. suspend you. Mm. Now, the arrest, I don't believe at that point in time anything was cited. I can't remember now, like I said, I was mm. trying to remember the sequence of events. If a reason was cited, if you're going to arrest somebody, right, is there a, a crime? Mm. Is it you are invited for and uh, answering to, invited to answer questions? You know, everything in Nigeria is arrest. Once they collect you, yeah. it's arrest. I don't remember anything of the sort being spoken about. So at the time, I think there was just jubilation first of all. You know, you're not, you made us suffer. Suffer so now. Yeah. now. But so, now... So... Uh, do Let me come back to you, Uti. Um, Celestine, I believe, from Surulere. Okay, you're live. Hello? Hello? Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Uti. So, so, yeah, so at that point, I think that the first reaction from Nigerians was, eh, eh, de, de, de. we got you, mm. right? But moving on, again, you know, typically the law says you are... You're supposed to be innocent or to prove guilty. In Nigeria, you're guilty. <laughs> to prove you <laughs> you know? So the fact is, in, in querying this case, which is why I said, there is enough in the sequence of events for me for you to agree with any of these three things, depending mm -hmm. on which perspective you choose. Mm -hmm. Because, again, what I'm looking for is clear information. Now, if when we suspended him, you said he's suspended subject to an investigation or maybe the impact or the, the Naira redesign process, policy, all of that. I get you. Then there's an update to say these are our findings and here's what it is. You went from suspension on the job to criminal arrest, mm -hmm. again, if that's what it was. And now somehow we've magically come to the possession of firearms, firearms. and ammunition. Mm. So you can again see why somebody who is behind the witch hunt theory will say, Amen. Absolutely. Let me take John from Bielsa. <laughs> Hello, you're live. Hello. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hello, good evening. Yeah. Yeah, good evening. Uh, the case of Odefeyer is a different matter. There are so many issues concerning this man. You know, there are so many stories that he was contesting uh, as the president in the platform of APC. And there are so many allegations that he uh, is a terrorist pusher and so many things. So, a lot of the DSS to do their work. Okay, thank you, John. Absolutely, but um, when we say allow DSS to do their work, right, he was already in prison. When they say remanded back to prison, who is in charge of someone in prison? It's not the DSS. Yeah. Do you understand? So that is where some level of abuse of power comes in, right? The fact that, and, and that's where you see the tussle. But you don't, you don't even have, like, like Issy said, we don't even have enough facts. I mean, the thing with seeing videos like this without the court, context... The judge eh, said that he should be remanded back to prison. No, I get that. So remanded back to prison is an instruction. What led to this fight? It could have been it that... who we move him. No, so that's what I'm saying, in that who will move him 
what is the motivation to move him? Is there money involved? What, what would lead to a fight? Yeah. So my point is, the, there is not enough info. It's easy for someone to say they are fighting because they said, who will move him? It could have been, guy, you step on me. Guy, don't talk to me like that. And, and we then, are discussing yeah. it and somebody has given it a headline and we've moved on. Because what will cause the fight? Well, I don't even want to, to fray on that because it really doesn't have much to do with the topic. But if you talk about these different aspects, a question came to my mind when we were also talking. I said, okay, if you even want to talk about the DSS, and is the DSS investigating? Hold on that thought. I think I have somebody from mm -hmm. Omoli. I will come back to you now. It's abuse of power. Omoli, you're live. Who is that? Hello? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Yes, um, I want to make a comment on the MFLA saga. Please go ahead. Um, what is happening now is very unfortunate because... This man has been held since over a month. If the DSS has any charge against him, they ought to have made it public. Even the one that they made public was after the, you know, the, the uproar of the people that was associated with its you know, lengthy, lengthy uh, detention. Now, a court of competent jurisdiction has given an order that this man should be released granted bail, and I should be returned to the correctional services. So why did the DSS arrest him again? The DSS is taking the laws into their hands, and I expect the president to call them to order. This is not the way to run a nation. You must obey the laws of our judges, our courts, for us to have respect in the international community. Thank you. The way they are behaving is unbecoming. They should be called to order. They are not a law unto themselves. That's my submission. Thank you Thank so you. much. Go ahead, Uti. You were going to say something. Wrap up. Yeah, so again, the, the responsibility of the DSS, because if you are returning him to the prison, right, to then be able to meet all the conditions for bail, I believe mm -hmm. that's what they mm -hmm. said. Now, um, the, the bail is on this... A charge of firearms and yeah. ammunition. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the cause of the quarrel and the fight? <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I said that. W without any information, mm -hmm. uh, these people are not, they're very easily aggravated. We can't actually see what it is. So that's why I don't want to fixate on the fight. But is there what appears to be an abuse of power? Yes. Because, like I said, appears. Because you're not giving information. I love what the caller said. You're not telling us what, why. It seems like because I can. I'll just do it. I'll, I'll do, do it. it. Yeah. And the, the reason why it is important that we're having this conversation, mm. because people don't see this. Today, it's a mere failure. Tomorrow, it, it, it might be somebody else. No, but that's the standard question. Do you understand that? Like, how yeah. would you sit down, you just come, pick, pick somebody up, go and put them in, 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 in a person, if not for the uproar of people, saying that you can't hold this person down, ideally by law. I think it's about it's, it's 72 hours 72. or 48 hours, 48 hours, I'm not sure how long. You can't hold somebody down. You must charge that person for their crimes and to court. Do you understand? But you've held this man down over a month. And everybody is looking at it and not saying anything. And all of a sudden they say, okay, take him back to prison. Prison water where they interrupt. Does DSS have a, a correctional facility? Leave the fight. Let's there. take youngest old man. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will fight on this beer. Hi, long time. Long time no year. Oh. We're, yes. We are, we are busy tracking and uh, buying a bado to <laughs> keep and save in case of in case it is. <laughs> uh, we are now being we are now becoming prophetic. I will forecast. Yes, so. <laughs> so I hope you have enough as bado. We have enough as bado and umbrella oh, so that we can trek where. Please do. It's tracking the thing. We must be healthy, whether we like it or not. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so. You see, what I have to say is that they should let the MFLA breathe. <laughs> no. The man is not in the good books of the Nigerian, especially amazingly like me. MFLA deals with me in all capacity. <laughs> but the law. Is the, the law. law. Thank you. You see, naturally, as an individual, I like people that are smart. And I think he's a very smart man. He doesn't go carry back with today, though. Like the Ladiak. Holiness in power. But why they screw me up? 
And the trend go down 10,000 with 25% this thing. He don't carry Bible. So the man is smart. If they don't have anything against him, then they leave him. The judge said, put him in prison. And who is in charge of prison, which is the correctional center? This thing the ESL they are doing, they are having their deal. Remember the man of ESCC, he has not even come out. Mm -hmm. Don't think you are one God. This table can turn. Let them understand how it works. What the, what the Lord says, you will obey it. First man, if I say I will be feeling now, if one or one went out with my Mimosa, but that does that never take me uh, not to understand. That does not me, mean that the Lord should not Nigerian. take his course. Yes. Yeah. You understand? As a Nigerian, he has a right or to prove guilty. guilty. So we need to grow up in this country. This one is, you know, why the world is watching. Ah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, youngest. The, the even challenge we are even having is mm. that you don't say the other or the proving you see. Waiting be the cry, they don't come saying a firearms. Mm. Abby, mm. if we want to talk firearms, all of them are guilty of firearms. All of them. All of, all of them. them. Everybody right they now that, that is in, in, in is in a high uh, position of authority, mm. most of them carry this thing so protection. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whether or not okay. you, you were it's caught. A a exactly. As to whether you have permission, you have the license or whatever mm. to carry the firearm. We, it it sounds it. like a You stretch. are not talking to any Nigerian. You are speaking about the, fe the CBN governor oh. of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. After the president, the, what did they call him? The vice president, the senate president, what will be the next uh, uh, position of authority? Nobody's so that's what I'm you. saying to you. So if even if there's the let us even accept that there was a possession of firearms, you understand? It is not in the wrong place for him to because you know how insecure Nigeria is. And he, so the point I'm trying to make is that it, today it is okay. I'm not a fan of a mefele. Because if I see him, me too, the way youngest old man say go, he go was that me go give him some punches. Because I know how much hardship he has brought for businesses. You had a billion naira before. Today, the value of your money has dropped just because somebody did not understand how to set better policies to grow the economy. Sorry, mm. I think I have a caller. <laughs> 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 breathe. I should breathe. Who is on the call? Celestine, sorry. Thank you for calling again. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead. I'm calling based on the case of uh, Ebefele. Go ahead, please. You see, Nigerian government, they are confused. <laughs> I must tell you. Me, uh, the Ebefele, is he the only person that has their arm in his, in his house? Uh, Atari Dokubo, wasn't he the one dressing Nigeria with both person people with firearms? Have they arrested him? MFL, before MFL could do anything, someone must have backed him up. If they should punish MFL, they should also punish Buhari. Because he was working on that Buhari. They should allow this man to rest. DSS, are they correctional center? Do they have prison in their, in their, in their, in their office? So why are they contesting and fighting with correctional center people with, uh, about MFL? What is their problem? As far as this country is, is beyond what we are living in, they are just doing this on, on their own way. And they, they, they have something in their cobalt. They just want to deal with that man. They should just tell us. You see why this theory will mm -hmm. continue to thrive about conspiracies of witch hunts, politically motivated, and abuse of power. Go ahead. Okay, I know so, we're talking. I mean, no this last caller, and when you guys were talking, you know, something struck me that... Um, it is also important to now look at the judicial system because if the judicial system, if you give a law as a judge, you, you pass it's a very Exactly. What, what is not the today. court? Do, that, that's the problem. And that is why we would keep seeing infractions like this. An abuse of power. A, abuse of power. Because if the courts are not respected, it's a total collapse in the society. It means anybody can wake up and do anything. Nobody will call them to order. Nobody would interpret the law. It's not like they don't know. They know. But because they know that they can get away with it. Mm. That's why we will see things like this. And that's why there would always be that friction. Oh, I have the right to do this or you have the right. I mean, it, it might not even be this. In a lot of situations where we have seen a total breakdown of law, it is because we know that even when... Because we know it is okay not to respect the law. Issy, let me come to you, then I'll come back to you, Uti. 
All right. Uh, following up um, Diola's thoughts, I totally agree with what she says. Professor Wolesho Inc. has made a statement. He said that justice is the first law of humanity. And what does that mean? It means that there should be fairness, there should be equity, there should be freedom of speech, and there should be transparency. But in this case, we do not have transparency in uh, in, in, in the case of uh, um, Amir Tele. And we, because we don't have that transparency, we don't have the facts, we can't even jump into any conclusion, even if they appear to be what they are. Okay. To be All right. Basically. Let me take Austin from Benin. Then I'll come to you, Uti. Austin, you're live. Okay. Good evening, my sister. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Good evening. How is the yeah. swimming pool over there? <laughs> uh, actually, I just want to I want to make an observation. Go ahead. The observation is that uh, I have noticed that a lot of your most of your callers. They are your regular callers anyway. They they are trying to make your program look as if you are your program is anti-government, anti-APC, and what have you. And that is not good for it's not good for the program. But thank God you have uh, you have someone like uh, Uti there. Uti is always very objective in our analysis and balance. Uh, and we have you. Have, we have you calling. The whole program will look as if uh, everyone, uh, everyone hates the government, hates the PC, and what have you. You need to, you, you people need to do something about that. That's the observation I want to make. Oh, you did, I thought you were going to call to balance the conversation. Hello? You should have called to balance the, it's what, they have what they want to say. You should have said what you have to say. <laughs> Uti, go ahead, please. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it, there's really nothing else to add to this mm. because there is something to be said for all of these things. And I think that all our callers have said what is most important. Yeah. We must be seen to be upholding the law. We must be seen to be doing the right thing. Um, we will take our cue from our leaders, right? And I love the part where you said that because it's not you today doesn't mean that it can't be you tomorrow. I think that just from the suffering that came from the redesign policy, all of us can afford to fold our arms and say, you know what, Let allow this rot. person Absolutely. to suffer. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is we must be able to have faith in the system. Yeah. We Forget all this ruckus about fighting. I'm not even going to deem, deem that to, to talk about it. But it is important to send that message to say that we are upholding the law. Mm -hmm. And I consistently say that, look, information is so powerful. In today's age of social media technology, information is in itself a currency. So when you take actions and you don't provide information and context, people can fill in the blanks. Of and course. today, there are a lot of platforms where people can quickly governize and fill in the blanks with whatever they say. So fake news is not always malicious. Sometimes it's from ignorance. Sometimes it's from not having the true and correct picture. What would have been, you are a communications mm. expert, right? So mm. you understand what is happening. What would have been the right thing for a government to do? Yeah. You can't just make an error. Even that suspension, what, was it clearly stated that this is the grounds to which we are suspen Absolutely. suspending you? So, then when they now moved on to house arrest, this is the grounds, you understand? Because let me tell you something. Nigerians have every right to sue Amir Feli. We have every right to sue him and he will pay for damages. We know what we went through. Has a right. Like mm. I said, it's easy for all of us actually to yeah. turn a blind eye and say, you know what, you know, off, really, it is. Off with your head. Exactly. But the <laughs> truth of it is, there is a proper way to do things. And it really, in this age, information is the most powerful thing that you can provide. I tell you. You give context so that people can even get behind you and say, we understand and what we back you're you up. to do. So that it doesn't mm -hmm. then appear that you're, mm -hmm. you're literally just taking advantage of the situation or you say, which hunt or abuse of power. Whichever of these three contexts you want to stand behind. The, the thing that solves all of this is it's communication. It's communicating what is happening. Because it, it just seems when there is no information. Mm. I mean, we're already mm. used to, we don't have trust. Part of that is information. Lack of information. It is also the, 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 you know, I've already said before that, again, if I tell you something, are you interested in listening to what I have to say? But this is a yeah. new administration. You have the chance to say, you know what, I've swept the dirty room clean. And I'm here. Clean. And take a different approach. Thank you. And let people be able to. Because 
again, if you think about the consequ the circumstances that we're in, a lot of people don't believe in the way this administration came to power. Mm -hmm. So they have a double need Absolutely. to be seen to be transparent, to be seen to be communicating, to be seen to do things the right way. And I think that there's a challenge in that space Absolutely. for the government. So quickly, let's read some comments. Emir Fele Saga is, for me, a big-time witch hunt, an abuse of power and politically motivated action. I believe all those who felt hurt by his new Naira redesign um, can easily come against him for doing that at the, at the time close to the period of the general election. Also, those who feel he made them suffer politically can easily come after him, and I sincerely believe that they are doing exactly that. They have, to, they have to define clearly what the crime Emir Fele committed, right, that would warrant his arrest. If they say he is in the position of, sorry, possession, I was supposed to write, of gun or firearm, why are they not arresting all these people that carry AK-47 all over the place in the country? The way things are going in this country is a complete sign that Nigeria has become a banana republic. This is from Santox. Do we have more comments quickly? Yes, um, this is, may I take mine? Go ahead, quickly. Okay, it says, hi, ways, ladies. Emir Pele is being held for all three reasons. One, unlicensed arms. But if you arrest Emir Pele for unlicensed, unlicensed arms, he should face the law. Then what about Asari Dokubo with arms and private army video on social media? Two, for the poly... For the poorly implemented Naira swap that was that caused hardship on the country. Yes, deserved, but but hold his principle. That is Buhari. Okay, we, we have we are out of time. With, um, Isi, sorry, sadly, we'll take those comments probably maybe tomorrow. See you um, tomorrow. Remember to follow, like, share, and invite your family and friends. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy.